What's up, everyone? This is Disney Plus Deets, where we break down everything you need to know about your favorite Disney Plus movies and series. I'm Kenneth. And I'm Marcellus. And not to toot our own horns, but we're pretty much the biggest Disney Plus fans out there. No, let's do it. Toot toot. That's right, let's get into it. Marcellus, you ever wonder what it would be like to get lost in a video game? I don't have to wonder. It happens to me all the time. Remember the other week when I... I meant literally. Like if you were trying to stop an evil program from taking over everything and it fought back by pulling you to a game grid where you had to fight for your life. Oh, you must be talking about the iconic 80s cult classic, Tron. The helmets the discs, and my favorite part, the light cycles. In 1976, writer-director Steven Lisberger saw a simple video game called Pong, which was essentially digital ping pong. Two paddles bouncing the ball back and forth on screen. That may sound boring to us now, but this was before personal computers existed. This game was considered revolutionary. Lisberger realized he could use the same techniques to bring video games and computer imagery together on screen. In that moment, the entire concept for Tron was born. The problem was Lisberger's idea was ahead of its time and seemed nearly impossible. According to animator Bill Croyer, literally nothing existed technologically to make Tron. That didn't stop Lisberger. He convinced his team that they could invent the technology to make the movie while making the movie. Lisberger pitched Tron to Disney, specifically to associate producer and visual effects supervisor Harrison Ellenshaw, one of Disney's greatest matte painters who had previously worked on Star Wars. Ellen Shaw was so well respected in his field, his faith in Lisberger's experimental concepts got Tron the green light from the studio. This film takes place in two worlds. There's the real world, then there's the electronic world, where computer programs act as their alter egos for their users, all under the watch of a rogue artificial intelligence operating system known as the Master Control Program or the MCP for short. You know what, I was always scared of mass control. <laughs> he reminded me of that, just that old, old kind of like f f father figure that just is very stern and just come out of nowhere. He had that voice, it's like my grandpa or something. I was about to say, when I met your grandfather, he was yeah, master he control. Me a master your control. Your grandfather was master control program. He was the MCP. Tron stems from the word Electron and is the name of a heroic security program who lives in the video game world. Tron because he's electronic, get it? <laughs> One of the filmmakers' first big wins was cast in Academy Award nominated Jeff Bridges to play Kevin Flynn. Bridges was intrigued by how new and different the concept was. Bridges says he loves working with first-time directors like Lisberger because they don't know what they can't do, so they just let their imaginations go. His hair was bleached and permed for the role. Between that and hours of filming under a hot, sweaty helmet, his hair started falling out. But Bridges wasn't mad at the helmet. He kept it after the movie wrapped and occasionally still wears it. The filmmakers wanted Bruce Boxleitner to play Tron's programmer, Alan Bradley. But Boxleitner wasn't familiar with video games and was going to pass. When he learned Bridges was on board, he was convinced to go all in. After finalizing their cast, all the filmmakers had to do was actually make the movie. Coyer described working on Tron as like Christmas morning every day because new technology was constantly being invented for the production. The 80s, look at it, it's so cool and 82, retro, even 82. though it's futuristic. I know, I love it. The video game world was supposed to be entirely computer animated. However, technology was limited, which meant that live actors couldn't be incorporated into the CGI scenes. The best computers available at the time just didn't have enough memory. They only had two megabytes of RAM and 330 megabytes of storage. 330 megabytes? Our videos are bigger than that. Exactly, Marcellus. That's why there's only a total of about 15 minutes of computer animation in Tron. The rest of the movie used a technique called backlit animation. Actors were filmed on a dark set using large format, black and white, high contrast film, manufactured specifically for this movie. The footage was then colorized by both animators and photographic techniques using light to give it that signature Tron glow. We must talk about the light cycles. Ken, I always wanted a light cycle, and I might oh. actually have one in my garage. <laughs> Can I ride it, please? <laughs> no. No, no, no. You need your own color and everything. <laughs> By the end of production, half a million frames of film were used in the animation and compositing process. This was a huge number for a movie at the time. There are a total of 1,100 special effects shots in Tron. 900 of those involve live actors shot within a digital environment. This was a huge achievement at the time. Ken, I remember being so amazed seeing this as a kid. 
Tron became a cult classic, inspiring everything from arcade games to cosplay to sequels. Lisberger was shocked to realize that Tron had even inspired people to study computers. Once again, Disney captured another slice of my childhood. I must say, Ken, I'm feeling inspired to play some video games. You prepared to do battle? I fight for the users. Okay, take it down a notch. <laughs> That's our show for today. Be sure to like, subscribe, and check out Tron, now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Take care of yourselves and the planet, and we'll see you next time. Marcellus and Ken, signing off. Marcellus, who do you think will win in a light cycle race? Me or you? End of line. <laughs> Wait, you just gonna end my life like that? Ken, I said end of line. Okay. <laughs>